Hey everyone, welcome to video two of my three video series. So video one, we just spoke about the um, comparison of Eka Howe and Tomograph in the predictive life cycle. So this one will go through the sort of surveying life cycle. So um, yeah, again, not all inclusive, but at the same time, just to give someone who's trying to do a bit of a comparison, uh, the look and feel um, of the two different products, okay? Uh, I just want to have a say a, a huge thank you to everyone out there who's watched the video um, or at least part thereof i know it's long um I'm trying to get as much in there as possible um who's watched the video but also provided feedback so thank you for that uh, i'll be correlating all that feedback and then in the third video i'll be responding to each one of those items um, as best possible and, and then at the very end of that there'll be a little pricing comparison as best to my um, potential as well for, for that as well all right so uh, yeah, let's get into it. Video two, boom. Sweet. So when it comes to hardware, we've got from the Echo House side of things, the Sidekick. Okay, if you want to uh, see the spec sheet of this thing, it's in the description below. All right. And the Tomograph side of things, we've got what we've known and love. Okay. Bunch of uh, spectrum analyzers. All right. And some measuring nicks. All right, so traditionally you'd see the USB hub of some sort, a few of those, a couple of those, and, and away you go, okay? Tomograph, Echo Howl, both of them you can do a spectrum analysis and a 11 analysis in the same survey, okay? One walk, you can do everything, okay? Multiple NICs, spectrum, and a 11 all right? Very cool, all right? What sets this thing apart is its spectrum analysis, all right? It is incredible what it can do and what it can detect and how quickly it does that, okay? Its sweep cycle is incredible, all right? So um, this is an incredibly powerful tool and, and it's what Echohal uses as the cornerstone for everything that they've got moving forward, okay? All the applications that come out for the iPhone, iPad, etc., cetera, um, are all built around this thing's capabilities and, and rightfully so. This is an incredible tool, okay? Some of you might say like, or what's the point of putting this up in the air, okay? My main concern is this thing's a single point of failure, okay? We have, and I have, and I know of people that have um, put the USB in the wrong way around, and it's actually uh, jacked up that port, right? So it's screwed the port up, and it's rendered the uh, device inoperable. So the only way to fix that is to send it back to Finland and get the guys over there to, to fix it up for you, okay? So this was the case, I don't know, let's say six months ago when I, when I first heard of it, right? So um, that's pricey. That costs, uh, you know, about almost 10% um, the value of the actual Psychic itself. And it's only because of, you know, where we are, the shipping from Australia through to Finland and then getting it resolved and then exchange rates, etc. Anyway, the price is, um, it was high, okay? So that's the challenge with these devices. Um, if you have one of these, if it gets lost, if it gets stolen, if you drop it, if the just that little nick over there breaks, right? You're in, you're in trouble, all right? Whereas these things, if for whatever reason, you snap a nick on that, you break the antenna, you snap a nick on that one, it's 50 bucks and you're done, all right? Not even that, okay? Um, and you're back up and running, all right? And you can have multiple of these and multiple of those and you won't be stuck dry, all right? If you break a sidekick, you're done, all right? Whereas in your arsenal, you could have a bunch of those, a bunch of those, and if one were to break, just swap it out, all right? Echo Hair Pro, sidekick. Tomograph, multiple NICs, multiple spectrum analyzers. Cool, so the survey and experience. Um, to set the scene, I used my Surface Pro and the Surface Pen to do the survey for both the Echohal application and in the uh, Tomograph application, all right? Um, with the Surface Pro, for me, the experience was exactly the same, okay? So walking around, click, 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 click. Every uh, click was accurate with both applications um, and all worked extremely well, okay? Um, what I did notice um, is that in Tomograph, as you do the sort of survey path, a little sort of guess range gets highlighted, which is really cool. Um, exactly the same as what the iPad does in Echo Pro.
macro, which was cool. Um, just a little something extra, right? It, what was good as well is with while I was serving, I could pinch and zoom on the screen, um, you know, to zoom in or zoom out, and that didn't have any false positives. With Echohow and with Tomograph, which is great, I could serve right away. Um, yeah, excellent. So that was good, but you have to mention uh, Echohow's advancements when it comes to surveying and, and how you do your surveying. And again, that's based off of the old sidekick, okay? So um, most notably being the the iPad, all right? Um, doing the surveying with the iPad, which I think is just a brilliant idea. Okay, the whole lightweight, long battery, you know, most people have iPads um, and that's a great, just a great idea, okay? Um, so that's something that Tamagraph don't have, all right? Um, me being a, not an anti-Apple, but I just, yeah, I'm anti-Apple. Um, I even went and bought out an iPad and used it for surveying, okay? So uh, it's a cool idea, um, very cool idea, something that it's worth noting, of course, all right? So next phase is this whole AI thing with the phone, you shoot your phone, walk around, and no, it's not an iPhone. Uh, and walk around and do your surveying, okay? Um, I personally, I tried it once out of curiosity, um, and that's where that stopped, all right? Um, but yeah, so again, like how advancing that that sort of phase of the surveying life cycle where you're walking around and taking measurements, right? And I think that's it's very smart and very well executed to leverage such a great tool like the uh, Psychic and use something as light as the iPad. When it comes to measuring nicks, days of old is we'd have a few measuring nicks and with Echo how we used to use the NIC 300s and SA1s after that and, and what have you. Uh, the problem is there is a DB difference between these NICs. Any like device out there, um, like you know, common enterprise devices out there, so your iPhones, your Google Pixels, if you have two exact same devices, okay, and you do some measurements off of those, there's going to be a delta, okay? Uh, the problem with that is if we have, let's say, three of these measuring and they've all got a delta, um, then the data that we actually present to our customers or to whoever, um, there's going to be some inconsistency, inconsistencies with that, okay? Um, how Echo how combated that was in the Psychic, they calibrated all the measuring radios, right? So theory has it, this sidekick and the next sidekick would be able to measure data exactly the same, okay, and same sensitivity, all right? So um, if my sidekick measures the next 72, all other variables are consistent, um, the next sidekick should do the exact, uh, measure the exact same value, okay? Um, so that's how Echo combated that problem, which is very, very clever. But um, even so, within Echo Pro, if you click on the cog button in the top right, You've got two adapters over here, right? You've got passive surveying, right? And on the cog button, again, you can then specify which channels you actually want to scan for if you want to be, you know, extremely specific about it. Um, so that's really cool. So as you can see with Nekahow Pro, there's no option, or there's no, not like no option, there's no need to define any offset values between your measuring mix because they're calibrated out of the warehouse. Cool. In Tomograph, what I've done is I've plugged in uh, one of my Linksys NICs, okay, and in Settings, Adapter Signal Level Correction, you click on that, um, you can see my NIC there, okay. So there'll, there'll be, you know, if I had multiple plugged in, there'll be three or four in there, okay, or however many you have. So the idea would then be that you could take one NIC as your control, and then you measure the deltas off of that NIC, you then go ahead and apply that accordingly within this signal level correction okay um, by no means is that better than what echo house solutions is because i mean this is on point it's fine-tuned at the radio level on the actual device okay um, that's obviously going to be a lot more accurate than what us doing what we do over here especially considering the mix you know the, the db and value will just keep fluctuating as you're trying to measure okay so by no means is it a super duper accurate all right um, that's just at least Timograph give it an option. All right. uh, within here on the right, so we've got plans and surveys, and then we've got properties. Under the scanner section, you go ahead and select your country code. Okay, clearly by no means is it exhaustive, but I think it encompasses most of the regions anyway. Um, and then you can go ahead and select what you want to do. Okay, if you want to do to turn to four, 
do five, whatever. Okay, there's your channels over there. When it comes to the estimated placement of measured access points, um, both Ekehau and Tamagraph do a really good job at that. Okay, um, APs are sort of placed in regards to, you know, the number of measurement points you take, so the more data you put into the application, the better place potentially the access points will be, okay? Um, signal that to measure that and, and what have you, all right? Um, that is of old, Ekehau would sort of keep the APs on the walking path, but um, yeah, as of more recent releases, they're sort of trying to better that algorithm to try and get those access points more accurately placed, okay? Um, so yeah, so within Ekehau, this AP is over here, uh, that AP is down here, a bit more, more over there, and this AP is down the hallway, a bit more over there, um, and that AP over there is actually downstairs. So the psychic actually measured the real lobe of that AP. Um, Tamograph. So the AP is over here. Um, yeah, same thing. Okay, so Tamograph sort of allow the AP placement to be slightly off the surveying path, although these two over here look very much on the survey path. Um, so this AP is in this study over here. This AP is down here a bit more. I was a little down, down the hallway, all right? So, um, so yeah, again, pretty much the same, okay? Both of them do a great job at it. So uh, if there is a deliverable that you need to sort of address where you have to pinpoint the placement of access points, probably for a monitoring tool of some sort, okay, um, relying on software to do that for you is not the best option, obviously. Uh, the best option there is to walk around, eyeball locations on a floor plan, jot it down, serial number, MAC address, a host name, if it's on the access point, whatever the case might be. Right. So when it comes to AP groups within Ekehau, we have two possible AP groups, okay? The term AP groups is something I just used to describe what I'm trying to talk about here, um, which can then be referenced within our visualizations, okay? So you have multiple visualizations here, but then you can do for all your access points, which would include all groups, okay? Your my access points, so that's your first type of group where uh, the best way to describe that is if I'm doing a survey for a customer, it's all their known infrastructure APs that are broadcast in their SSIDs um, that I would then go ahead and find as my access point, okay? Uh, other access points would then be everything else that I detect, okay? So if I'm doing a full-on passive survey, passive survey, I'll probably detect in neighboring APs, um, hotspots, little ad hoc access points, whatever the case might be, they'd fall under the other category, okay? Um, and then you can have a selected APs, all right? So the best way is on the left over here, you've got anything with the dark green, my over there is your my AP, and then if it's not dark green, then it's a, um, it's an other access point. In Tamograph, when we're on our left over here, we've got our measured access points. If we right click in the white area, you go custom group, okay? You go manage, a lot of, um, Flexibility has now been introduced. Okay, so I'll show you in what sense. So you create a new group, give it a name, and just call it Infra APs. Okay, so it's these ones over here are my infrastructure access points. Okay, um, create a new group. Just another example is um, printers. Okay, you know that there's a few printers out there. All right. Um, and then last one over here, let's just call them unknown. All right, so straight away, you hit okay. On the left over here, I've now got three groups, okay? But that was by no means exhausted, okay? I could do a few more, whatever is required, okay? Um, but infrastructure access points, printers, and unknown, okay? So now if I'm doing a a signal level, okay. Um, I just deselect everything over here, so I'm not showing anything, okay. So that purple is just the part of the survey, okay. Survey now put. So if I wanted to then see my infrastructure access points, that's them, okay. If I want to see my printers, that's them, or if I see any other ones, that's them, okay. But you can see the flexibility I've got here and the potential to um, really advance my reporting, okay. Um, showing all the uh, well, all the different 
Wi-Fi um, transmitters out there and, and what impact they may have on my environment. Okay, um, really quick, really easy, nice and neatly done too. Okay, so I think that's a really cool feature in Thermograph is to have that AP group functionality on the left and then to be able to you know use your visualizations based on that group okay um, so yeah pretty cool in thermograph if you expand that left pane if you pull it across like that right you'll get to see all your editor 11 data all right so you see your channels your bands your encryption types your maximum data rates uh, special streams etc okay so all that stuff's in there on the left all right in thermograph if you then call into echo how and if you pull up rtfm make sure you're on survey data over here okay um you'll be able to see all that data as well all right here's your fire using your data rates your channels signals etc okay what's cool about this is at a snapshot you got a data rate column okay straight away you can see the lowest mandatory data rate right which is one meg per second in this instance over here go to five and it's six over here 24 over here 24 over here okay so straight away you can see if data rates you know have they been trimmed and whatnot okay whereas in tomograph you can't see the data rates okay um the fact that you've got all this data in here shows that you're grabbing the right information just about adding that extra column for data rates okay and it's not even like i can right click and and add that in there it just doesn't exist okay um so it's just an observation when it comes to sort of seeing that edit 11 data what um what has been captured in echo how and in tomograph fundamentally exactly the same except tomograph doesn't have data rates in it So when it comes to spectrum analysis, this will be a pretty quick topic. Uh, in Echohal Pro, I've got the sidekick connected. Okay, that's busy. Stephanie, uh, the RF, all right. And uh, as you can see at the bottom over there, these little short, sharp spikes over there. It could be, you know, Bluetooth. It could be a whole bunch of stuff just transmitting energy, okay, within the two full band. Um, that is incredibly awesome when it comes to detecting things that are really short sharp when it, um, in transmission, right? So not quite as short sharp as DFS, right? But uh, something I've seen a lot more of happened to me literally two weeks ago was um, there's little RF sensors in meeting rooms in enterprise world, and they use that to sense people in the room to turn the lights on. Um, and they are really, really narrow band, but super, super, super uh, dense, right? Um, very high data cycle and they often cause issues with the, the RF environment. Um, so that's something that the psychic picks up quite easily, uh, to be honest. So in Tomograph, I'm using the Wi-Fi DPX. Okay. Um, it's recommended by Tamasoft to be used in Tomograph. Okay. So if you go to settings and sorry, you go to view and spectrum and networks. Okay, you'll start seeing your spectrum analyzer. Okay, um, there's your waterfall down the bottom over here. Uh, as you can see, it's quite clear that the data captured is by no means as granular as the psychic. So I dare say um, things like those light sensors in meeting rooms that I'm starting to see more and more of would probably not be detected through here without any sort of extended analysis okay um, whereas it's like it's just part of the walk that you do when you do your survey will capture that um this will probably take a bit more effort to get that data okay things like continuous transmitters video cameras and what have you you will still be able to see that obviously quite clearly through here um but it just yeah it just wouldn't be of the same quality not even close uh, to the psychic all right um but just for completion over here you can pick two four all right or five okay so if you had two dbx's in there you can obviously do one two four one to five all right um you can also detach the window if you wanted to to make it easy for whatever reason um just another option okay um but yeah so that's that's the difference between the spectrum analyzing 
between Ikehau and the DBX. It's not a challenge. When talking visualizations in the context of analyzing data, um, I just want to sort of single out one thing. So it's one of the most common things that we look for when we do surveys is signal strength. So we'll just sort of focus on that one thing for now. Um, we've spoken about a few things where you know one software does it better than the others. So I really like in Echo how, how I've restricted my visualization to the inside of the building, considering it's all I actually surveyed. I didn't do any surveys on the outside, so I don't, I don't want to see colors out there. It doesn't matter. Um, and how in Tamograph, how you can have different groups defined to then display that visualizations. That's also very cool, okay? Um, but what I will say within Echohow, what's quite nice is that anywhere on any on the floor plan over here, I can just hover, okay? And it will show me what we measured, okay? So on, level, on the right, I've got floor one, okay? The RS is high, uh, the channels, even with the primary channel highlighted bold, okay? And then the name of the access point. Okay, anywhere in the floor plan, I can hover out and I'll find that data. Okay, um, it's quite cool. It's it's nice. So if you you know if you've done a survey, uh, and for whatever reason extrapolate this out to a bigger site and there was an issue right here, okay, you could hover over there and get an idea of what um, the potential signal strength is in that area. Okay, now I say potential because um, this wasn't measured data. At that exact point this is all guess range has come into it okay um, does that matter yes it does to an extent but at least gives you a, a, you know, a, a very good guide as to what to expect in that area okay um, something's very very cool if you go into tamograph all right so if I hover that same area let's say over here okay I get a random number with DBM followed behind it on the screen okay um, that doesn't mean a whole lot to me all right, personally, but if I were to hover over an exact survey point, I get that data as what you saw in Ekhal. Okay, the same sort of details. All right, um, instead of so I've got signal strength over there, I've got the access point name and then the SSID. Okay, in that one location. All right. Um, so basically, the difference here is that Ekhal have introduced that data, but they've pushed it out to the guest range, which is, I mean, I can't see why not, right? And I should use it quite a lot. Um, and but with Tamograph, they're restricted to actual known survey points. So there's no guest range taken into that into that data, okay? Um, but again, within Tamograph, other things, I can't sort of restrict that signal strength to the building, all right? Um, they look to sort of almost fill the entire floor plan with color, all right? Um, so that's another thing I sort of, I've noticed, all right? So, when it comes to visualizations, they both have their different, you know, different types of visualizations, okay? Um, different ways you can manipulate that, right? Um, they both do it well. So for me to add that in this video, would just blow the video out to beyond what it is now, which is silly, silly wrong. When it comes to analyzing the survey data, um, what's quite cool is in Echo Pro, if you can actually access points, if you go surveys, uh, level one, this is the floor over here. If you find one, you survey capture data over here. You right click and you go inspect. Okay, um, that brings up the RTFM pane at the bottom. Okay, and it automatically takes you to the survey tab. All right, and it gives you what you would have seen if you were doing it live, obviously. Okay, um, so you've got your Five gig band on the bottom over here, your access points, and then all the APs that were captured over here, okay? Um, what's really cool is, try to make this a little bit easier for you to see. You've got this little sliding bar over here. So this survey started at 15.28, let's say 20 minutes past three, okay? And as you scroll through, see this little blue dot over here? Just goes through the floor as if where I was walking, okay? And it displays all the captured data at the bottom over here, which is wicked cool, okay? So straight away I can see all my data that I've captured the spectrum, the whole nine yards, okay? What's also cool about this is I have a start time and I have an end time, 
okay so that took me what three minutes to survey that top upstairs over here okay now um, where this may come in handy is if, if you've got an army of people doing surveys for you and they've gone out and they've been doing something extremely consistent like a, a shopping a type of shopping store okay where you know there'll be 20 aisles back of house couple cool rooms or whatever right um, you know that they would all take roughly let's say 25 to let's say 35 minutes to do that survey okay if someone comes back to you and gives you a 15 minute survey or a 10 minute survey straight away you go well there's something askew here um, either Eka Hal is presenting the data incorrectly which is highly unlikely considering everything else would have been the same um, or the person doing the survey just didn't do the right job okay so straight away you can sort of you know question the integrity of the data okay so that's pretty cool in Tamograph you don't quite have that luxury okay so to find the survey data on the right over here you've got plans and surveys okay you find the floor you're on and then you've got your survey data over there okay um, if you right click on there you can rename it or add comments and this is purely text-based okay um, in echo how you can actually add I should probably have shown you that I'll do it now add survey notes okay like everything else text-based and it's also picture-based if that's required okay um, so yeah but unfortunately from here I mean I know I started the survey here right so it gets some data okay so the start time and and what have you but I can't find the other end of the snake right so I can't tell you what the end time is for that survey data so I don't have the ability to into, um, to question its integrity um, much like I could in Ekahal now that's not going to be done for every single use case I know but at the same time it's something cool to have okay um, and the fact that you can sort of scroll through your data and have something like RTFM pop up and just show you the data at that moment in time I think uh, Ekahal has executed that um, that analysis part of the life cycle perfectly um, because to me having RTFM out here RTFM and, and being able to flick through and, and see everything um, I think that's very very cool and it makes analysis of data extremely easy and um, it's great for reporting as well so if you want to sort of capture any other's data for whatever reason um, it's very quick and easy to do screenshot bang throw it in okay um, very very cool what's worth noting is that within Ekahal we have the option to do our surveying in different ways with different tools so by that I mean obviously the iPad app and the iPhone app and they have now released um, again with the cornerstone of those two applications being the psychic um, that enables that whole process so this move to a an iPad uh, form for surveying is um, not overly new to the Windows users with the Surface Pros and Styluses, but it does move this whole surveying thing in the right direction because now we've got form factors that are small, light, um, easy to use with a stylus, um, long battery life as well, which I love, um, and that just makes the whole process so much. Uh, more enjoyable, I suppose you could say, um, a little less taxing on the physical aspects, right? Um, so something definitely worth noting. Um, and the Echo just continue to evolve that, right? So now they're talking about AI and, and all that sort of stuff, okay? Um, but yeah, within the Tomograph side of things, you have Windows or you have Mac. So uh, with Windows, you can still have that tablet form where you've got the Surface Pro. The only problem with that is um, the battery life and the Surface Pro, albeit, you know nice as a full full featured application on the tablet it's not um, the battery life isn't anywhere near as long as what the iPad is as an example and it's definitely not as light okay so um, that's just another comparative right so a lot of people have moved to iPad surveying or those using the Ekahal um, so that's something that um, yeah it's just a really cool feature and I think a lot of people are moving to tablet form factors as their daily workhorses so having that application on that form factor will be very very cool um, but yeah again Echo Hell nailing it with the with the iPad and the 
and the iPhone applications, Termograph is still with the Windows and Mac OS side of things. Hey, uh, hey made me buy an iPad. And um, yeah, the only time I use the iPad is for the surveying. So yeah, definitely worth noting. And that, my friends, is a wrap. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if anything, hopefully it was informative for some of those who are looking for sort of two bits of information. Okay. The, uh, the main difference that we have here between Thermograph is the Psychic and its capabilities, especially in regards to spectrum analysis, okay? Um, this little DBX over here just doesn't quite, you know, live up to its standards as required, all right? So, um, that's the main difference, all right? How vital is that? I mean, I do spectrum analysis through every one of my walks, and it's only because I'm doing it just because the Psychic is doing it for me, okay? And it's something that I'll always... Um, analyze afterwards uh, because more and more things are being introduced into the environments these days that are messing with the Wi-Fi that we're trying to so hard to design and to deploy for our customers so um, it might not be uh, the straw that breaks the back of a horse but it's something that is extremely extremely cool to have and handy to have especially to its capabilities all right um, application wise I think they're both the same they both output great data um, they're all intuitive, they work well in surveying, um, this is on Windows by the way, uh, and they, um, they both give us the data that we need to be able to analyze our wireless networks. So to me, at the application level, um, they're both great. At a hardware device level, more work goes into the Tamograph side of things, um, and that's something that we've all been used to uh, from days of old before the Psychic, all right? Um, whereas with the Psychic, you've got a single device, they turn it on and away you go. Right, um, but ultimately that is a single point of failure because if, uh, if that sidekick gets broken or stolen, then you're kind of kind of stuck, and some of us might not carry all these little dongles around with us anymore. All right, um, yeah, just a note. That's all. Point to consider. All right, I hope you enjoy that. Last video will be coming up soon, um, where we'll just sort of revisit any comments uh, about the last two videos, and then wrap it up with a pricing sort of comparison best possible all right so uh yeah thanks for watching even with just a part of it i appreciate that